What's up, fam? And welcome to season two, episode six of BBI Talks. I'm your host, Professor Karima Lotus. BBI Talks is the platform where Black business owners and leaders discuss issues that matter to us. Today's topic, the value of Black art. Featuring our Black business owner of Dope Pieces Puzzle Company, Sister Chris Hale. Now on episode five, just in case you missed it, and you can go back and pick it up, we discussed the importance of building generational wealth. And on this episode, we're going to continue the discussion as we take a look at how securing Black art can help us build the type of wealth that allows our legacy to benefit from it for generations to come. BBI Talks, you know what it is. Let's go. We got to bring businesses back. My business is black. My business is black as the universe. I know what they mad. They got to react because we're universal influencers. I can supply you the man. Get what I need out the land. The earth is the kingdom of God. Glad that I know where I am. We got to bring businesses back. My business is black. My business is black as the universe. I know what they mad. They got to react because we're universal influencers. I can supply you the man. I can supply you the man. Get what I need out the land. Glad that I know where I am. We are broadcasting live from RICE, which for those of you who don't know, it's the Russell Innovation Center for Entrepreneurs right here in Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Chris Hale, who is our guest today, is the visionary behind visionaries and his work with lead organizations such as the Russell Center, I'm sorry, the Russell Innovation Center for Entrepreneurs, uh, Operation Hope, and the Phoenix Leadership Academy. Determined to play an integral role in the new Black renaissance that is being driven by an international cultural shift in the Black community, Sister Chris was disappointed with the lack of representation in a $2 billion puzzle industry and decided to do something about it. Sister Hale introduced contemporary, fine, street, and urban artwork into the puzzle industry, placing Black culture once again in the forefront. So, without further ado, let's welcome Sister Chris Hale. <laughs> How you doing, Sister Chris? I am great. I am so excited to be here this afternoon. Well, we are well, excited we are to excited. have you, and we, look, we're not going to take too much time. We're going to jump right in, all right? All right. So the first question that I have is, when did your love affair with Black art Black begin? Art. So, okay, so there it's twofold. So I always liked art, but I was at um, Brother Reggie's bookstore, and ah. they had a picture um I saw a picture there and it was of a artist, Gilbert Young. Yes. Yes. And it was the piece called He Ain't Heavy. And it was the first time that I saw art and understood that it wasn't just pretty pictures, that it conveyed a message. And it was more, it was just, I was almost overwhelmed. I was like, yo, I love this. And so I'm originally from Long Beach, California. And there was another, um, Brother named Akinsanya, who had a uh, art gallery down there, and he did you know a whole bunch of um, sculptures. But he had this piece called Black Pearl, and it was probably the most beautiful face that I ever saw. And for my graduation gift, my father purchased that piece of art for me, and my mom had it framed. And so it just kind of grew from there. But that Gilbert Young piece, just seeing that. And understanding that um, there was a story and conveying a message and a feeling, I was like, "Hook, hook." So, 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 so specifically, <laughs> what was it about black art that moved you? So, with the "He Ain't Heavy," and it's really, really, um, it's a very popular image. Um, Gilbert Young's "He Ain't Heavy," and I had the opportunity to actually meet him. And it's a image of a brother reaching down over a wall to pull someone else. Up. Mm -hmm. And for us, you know, like the adage of crabs in a barrel, I think that that just kind of knocked it all the way out for me. But then just um, Black Pearl, and I'll be honest, at the time, I had a really big crush in high school on this guy um, named Tony. And he was really, 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 really dark skinned, just beautiful skin. Yeah, beautiful. And when I saw the picture, I was like, it just 
you know, you don't see dark skin celebrated that way, at least not when I was, you know, in 93, you know, um, and it just spoke to me just how beautiful she was. And you could tell by the way that the artist drew her, you know, she had a head wrap on. I'm going to put that picture up on uh, my Instagram page because I, I still mm -hmm. have it. It just, I don't know. I don't know if it was a uh, ancestral. I don't know if it was like, you know, something that's been left behind in our DNA, but it just, I connected with her and just, she was just beautiful. Awesome. 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 And you know, and funny, funny, uh, many of us um, uh, may have had our first engagement with black art uh, from uh, watching the Cosby show. Because if you yeah. watch the Cosby show, I mean, all on the walls of the house were all um, very famous black mm -hmm. pictures, um, and people that we really need to go back, go back and, and research, research and take a look at their, look at their, their beautiful pieces. And so, and so I, I, I definitely am with you in terms of just the beginnings. Um, me growing up in New York, or at least until I was nine, my mother used to take us to museums and, and look at fine art. And so, and so that, that engagement at a young age is very important. important. You're getting ready to say something. You know, and I want to piggyback on that because it just occurred to me that there was something else that happened. I don't know how old everybody else is, but I'm 46. And when I was in high school and partially in middle school, what I used to watch was um, Teen Summit. Yeah. And Teen Summit was, my, I mean, I would be up first thing in the morning on a Saturday like that. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, is it all right now? <laughs> you know. And so when Ananda was, actually it was Lisa, and then Ananda came on. And what she was saying was for Black people to have... Um, self-love and especially women that it's really important for parents to have positive images and yeah, varying yeah. images around the house and yeah, so yeah. i remember saying you know when i have children i'm gonna make sure that there's art all over the place because um you know i, I remember first time hearing the term color struck when i was in high school and i was talking to a friend of mine and they were like you act like you're color struck and i was like what does that mean? One and two, when they explained it, I was like, no, my mom is like very, very light skin. Like she's this color, you know, and my father was very, very dark skin and I'm not going to choose to love one over the other. So like right. color and skin tone was always very, you know, and I, I became very conscious of it. And so I wanted to make sure that, you know, if I had children, they didn't grow up with that as a, as a thing with them. And so when I saw that picture of black pearl, I was like, she's going to start the collection. And I remember being very cognizant of that as I was going through the mommy, I want that piece of art right there on the wall. You know, I want I want that. And um, seeing, you know, open up my graduation gift and it was that I was like, this is the first, you know, piece of art. And, you know, just those few things you don't really understand, like those seeds being planted, you know about us being beautiful and my dad would see somebody walking down the street with no shirt on or you know a guy walking with no shirt on and he's like that's a beautiful shirt you have on brother and i'd be like that's so silly <laughs> but you know you don't hear that or when and i'm sorry and i will go off subject but it's also important because i had a friend and um after i graduated high school and she was very very brown skinned and she felt some kind of way about it in comparison to like most of our other squad and when she met my dad because my dad was you know elmer singleton always you know lifting um his name up um now he's amongst the ancestors he said uh he saw her and he's like you sure are black she you know recoiled a little bit and he was like and you are so beautiful he's like do you know and so i think that with art having you know an art an artist really depict us in a way that like you are so beautiful like with your brown hues or your light hues or your freckles or your vitiligo or your you know being you know golden complected i think that those things became really really important to me and i've been cognizant since Beautiful. Beautiful. So now, so now, now we're moving into dope, dope pieces. pieces. Puzzle, mm -hmm. puzzle company. So, so we got the foundation in terms of your love, love of black artwork, but how did you decide to translate it into a puzzle, puzzle industry? Particular? Not seeing the love, actually, I think is what happened. And so I, I've been a puzzler since I was like really young. I, um, started doing puzzles maybe in kindergarten and I have a large family, but everyone is significantly older than me. 
But when we sat down to do puzzles, everybody was there. You know, my mom was there, my sister was there, my brothers were there. And I remember the first puzzle that I recall doing with my family was a uh, a Marvel Heroes puzzle. And they let me put the first piece in and they were like, ah, oh, she did it. And I was like, I'm a star. You know, I was like, I love this. But throughout my time growing up and as I became an adult, I had a hard time finding pieces that I liked aesthetically. And so I would tend to lean towards the content of a puzzle. I'm an English major. So I went and, you know, I bought this really dope puzzle that was um, 100 best literary works. And then when I went back to find something else, I ended up buying a picture of a library. But every time I do a puzzle, I ball it up, put it back in the box and just, you know, lost them. And I remember just kind of like, I want to put stuff up on my wall or be able to like have it and keep it as like a memory. Like my uh, my sister-in-law's best friend, her name is Lori. She's amongst the ancestors now. So I always want to, you know, lift her up too, because she definitely was a part of this journey for me. She kept all her puzzles. And I was like, I'm not keeping all my polar bears and ice cream puzzles. I want to keep something that's significant. Right. But I had a lot of friends that were artists. And so um, this there's a piece up here in the corner, um, a beautiful... Uh, and I'm going to pull her down in a second. Actually, I'm just going to pull her down real quick right now because yeah, okay. um, and I should have had her ready to go. But uh, Lady Adorn, my friend was showing me his uh, artwork that he was getting ready to put into a show. And I saw her and I just connected. And it was out of time. I was looking for another puzzle. And then he showed me the other one that's sitting up there. And I was like, you know what? I would do that as a puzzle. I had it made as a puzzle. I showed him the picture and he was like, run it. And I had the blessing of meeting other artists that were open to allowing me to use their work. And what I found is, you know, I get these beautiful messages, you know, think she looks like me. She's so beautiful. Cause like you mm -hmm. said, the puzzle industry is a $2 billion industry. And I think we all have aunties, grandmas, friends next door and neighbors who've done puzzles and you see them doing, um, you know, all kinds of stuff, whether it's right. crayons or um, Americana puzzles. But I really wanted to offer the option of introducing artists and um, doing fine art pieces that you can actually hang on your wall because art for us doesn't have to be way over there and we're over here. Right. And so right. I thought that it would be a really great way to introduce artists and have them grow, you know, their audience because one of the pieces can be like eight by eight. And you're not, everybody can't have that. That's a one time piece and it's purchased. Right, but then right. if you have it as a puzzle, it's in this little box. You can send it across the globe and it's an introduction to that artist, but it's also a very uh, tactile way to deal with art and interact with it. So um, it just hit all the things for me. It was very selfish, but also very cognizant of what it could do outside. And, and, and the, I mean, it's genius. genius. I mean, I, mean, I, I love, love the pieces. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> the vision is there. <laughs> Look, we Look, know who we're talking to. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, I, now, I, I want to also, also ask you about, about the journey, the journey of, of actually, actually putting the puzzle, puzzle together, together the business, business together. Um, what um, has what that journey been, been like for like, you? Has it been it's hard. hard. It's so hard. It's hard. It's hard. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, and not the company itself, but entrepreneurship is hard. And I think that... Um, we don't talk about that enough as far as, you know, being entrepreneurs and sharing our personal journey, because it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for everybody. That's you know, right. I finally got the boxes picked out. I finally got the things, you know, the way that I wanted them well enough. And then my stuff got trapped in uh, customs because it was coming over from China. Ah. And I was like literally a whole week just on the floor crying. Just ah. what about what was getting here? They're supposed to be here by Christmas. I have to be able to get them out. And then, you know, um, they, they finally arrived and getting those things out. But it's like a kid, you worry about them. It's like, you know, your child's out too late at night. You know, where are they at when they're coming home? You know, what's happening with them? Or, you know, you see them doing really well, whether they're listed, you know, they're on the dean's list or whatever. You know, mine ended up in a magazine. So, you know, entrepreneurship is hard in itself, but finding the art that I liked wasn't hard. That's a joy. You right, know, right. getting the manufacturer, making sure we get everything right. You know, it's, it's a journey. But what I always encourage on any time I talk about it is know your stuff, mm -hmm. know your stuff. You know, industry standard for puzzle thickness is 1.7 millimeters to 1.9. Higher mm -hmm. standard puzzles start at two millimeters and they go up to three millimeters. The know your um, 
No, so like for me, I need to know like the top five, top 10 puzzle sellers. What makes them great puzzle seller sells? What makes their puzzle so great is the feel of the puzzle, the thickness of the piece, the content. Is it a linen thing? Um, is there a linen finish, a gloss finish, a white back, a blue back, a black back, a tan back, you know, really understanding your industry, um, I think really helps to foster a certain level of confidence in whatever business you do. Whatever I am doing, I need to know I need to be an expert in that. So one, I know how much money I'm spending on it, that I can speak to it and that I'm respectful of my customers, you know, as they're coming to purchase my stuff. There's people who love sneakers. You know, what's the stitching on that sneaker? How, what's the material that's used? What's the, you know, what's, what colors are you using? What dyes are you using? Because somebody who's a real sneaker head, you know, is really going to want to make sure that their sneakers are dope because it's a t-shirt company. They don't want their stuff shrinking. And so, um, when we talk about starting a business and building a business, I think foundationally one of the things that makes you a stronger business person and helps to alleviate some of the bumps in the road is that you know your stuff. You can't ask me about puzzles and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I know because I need to because it's my business. You bring up bring a wonderful point, point in terms of making sure that we go out there and do our homework, do our research, and, and experience them. You know, if, if there's nothing wrong with going to a local bookstore or ordering um, online and testing out the puzzles yourself if that's your business or testing oh, yeah. out like said, the sensors of the t-shirt you know, buy a sample or, or a sample and then the other thing i thought about was you know with covid um we learned very quickly how much how we don't produce in this country at you know to help help small business owners you know both meet the challenge of producing great quality product, but also having it be something that's affordable at the same time. And so, but you know, you know when I see a problem, I really see an opportunity. So now, so now there may be, we may not know until this uh, uh, circulate, but there may be um, black businesses that actually produce puzzle, puzzle pieces. So these are the things that, you know, make shows like this like important because you need that someone who is watching that may be able to fill that need. So now, yeah. what type of, sorry. No, I was saying that's very true. And in this journey, and what I'll say is just adding on to that with regards to um, COVID, COVID did do nothing for my business. It was a murder of George Floyd that mm -hmm. was a turning point for dope pieces, really. And I found because people were looking to support, you know, black owned businesses and there were other puzzle companies that were growing. But when they murdered George, George Floyd and the country saw it and it, it, it touched the hearts of a multitude of people who were not as active and not as cognizant of the things that were happening to black people right. and Black Lives Matter blew up, dope pieces blew up through that. And I, and I mentioned that all the time, again, out of respect for his life and then a real understanding of, you know, the time we were in, um, you know, after COVID and dur or during that time of COVID and being locked up and seeing all these horrible things happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, and, I, and I think that happened to dual folks. Dual folks. So on one oh, hand, there were those who at one point in time were somewhat apathetic to the plight of Black people in this country. Um, mm -hmm. Then they started to develop a certain amount of empathy. And they wanted to support Black-owned businesses. But then but on then the other side, we had us as a community that became more culturally, you know, uh, how can I say, if you will, um, really wanting uh, ourselves to be depicted in a, in a specific way, wanting us to be understood in a more refined way. And so we're looking at products and services that reflected this, this new state of consciousness as well, which just feeds right into it. I think that it really made us hunger for home in a different way. It made us hunger for home, hunger for community, and just, you know, when you have a bad day, you want to go home to the place that you're comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the consistent murders, you know, the, um, you know, the murder of Aubrey, and then this, I mean, and they're all vicious, but I don't think the country saw anything like the murder of George Floyd so raw that the way he called for mother, the way he called for his mom, I think that that was also us going back to mom and be like, you know what? I want to do more things that are black. I want to do, I want to create a space and home for me and my children in case this mess don't get good. And you know, Trump is in office at that time and really not feeling home at home at home. 
And so I definitely see wanting to surround yourself with more black things, more things that look at you so that your sons and your daughters have a sense of pride about themselves to where um, we're not always cowering in this country. And so I think that those things became very important. I, I would definitely agree. Definitely. definitely. So now um, it's, it's, we're, we're actually running up against our commercial break. So I'm just going to tell everybody who is watching and then have two commercials we come back, okay? Yeah. All right. So All right. I want to thank those of you who are watching live on Instagram. Thank you for watching BBI Talks. I want to thank those of you who are on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be sure to like and to share and hit that little notification, that little bell. So that way, when we go live, you know exactly when we are on and you can join in the conversation. If you have any questions or if you have some comments, please be sure to drop those little notes in the comment section so that I can ask our guests today go ahead and ask questions y'all we got somebody on here that can answer them and if, if she doesn't have the answer i'm sure she will you know do her due diligence to try to get an answer back to us if it's something specific to our industry so in the meantime i want to thank um, my um, BBI yeah, talk sponsors, sponsor. I want to thank my, my producer who right now is in Vermont. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do to help help this show a success. So without further ado, we're going to go to our commercial. This episode of BBI Talks is brought to you by our proud sponsor, Abdullah Daniels Group, LLC. We are a full service life insurance agency that represents multiple carriers in all 50 states. For more details, log on to our website at adgllc.org or call us at 404-561-7480. Abdullah Daniels Group, Life Insurance Agency. P.S. This episode 1614 Oil. Let all things be done with love. 1614 is a nourishing hair, skin, and nail oil. Cultivated to transform your self-care routine with our unique natural essential oils that features sweet vanilla, citrus with a hint of cinnamon. P.S. Naturally Yours 1614 Oil is now available at psnaturallyyours.com. All right, All right, sister, we are back. We, 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 back. We, we, for those of you who are just joining ABI Talks, we have the wonderful visionary uh, sister Christina, which I just found out. I didn't know that was me. Don't nobody call me that. <laughs> Don't encourage that. <laughs> sister Chris Hale, I was like, we should hold it out. Uh, sister Chris Hale, who is the wonderful founder and owner of Dope Pieces Puzzle Company, and we're talking about the value of Black art. So now, you, you have your business up and running, you, um, some of your uh, puzzles got caught in uh, customs, so what did you do? how did you navigate that? <laughs> Um, I cried and then I kept pushing. So, but what I did do actually is I was setting the foundation for when they did get here. I found my um, puff cuff is where my uh, puzzles are stored. They also do fulfillment. I bought all my bags. I bought all my postage. I made sure that everything was set up and ready to go so that I could uh, just pull the trigger when they got here. I just, uh, Robin Roberts in her master class um, gave a quote that I, that she, well, she said something that now I use as a quote and I just, I loved it, was dream big, but focus small. I think so many times we, you know, we get caught up in our business. Like, I want to be this and I want to be this. And I'm like, is your foundation set? Right. Is that is that ready to go? And yeah, so yeah. Um, while I was waiting for the big thing to come down and the puzzles to be delivered, I had everything set up. And so the day that the puzzles arrived, you know, I remember by the time I went to go pick them up, there were already three people in my office and we had already done the exchange. I had every form of payment. And if you're doing any type of vending or selling, have your Venmo, have your Square, have your PayPal, have all of your options together to pay. So I made sure that all those things were open. All my packaging was together. So I just prepared. I prepared for um, for the landing of the puzzles to happen. And I, and I, I hope, hope I hope our listening audience, our viewers, are really paying attention because you're dropping jewels. Like if like someone it's really it's taking notes, no, um, um, you're, you're actually rolling out a blueprint. Just, just, just that. that you're rolling out a blueprint. So I really hope everyone has a chance to really come back 
um, um, and, and take notes, notes from this from show, show. because this, this, is, this is great stuff, and I appreciate you sharing it. Well, oftentimes, you. to your point a little point earlier, earlier, we think of this whole crabs in the barrel type mentality, and it's great to know and to show that, that not everybody has that mentality. I mean, some people really want to see others win. And so it's I saw so that. I mean, that's, that's you know, uh, my friend and I will talk about, um, you know, just being successful and stuff. And I was like, I want my own island, but I don't want to be always on my island. I want to be able to go to your island and your island and your right. island too. It's not fun by yourself. Success is not fun alone. That's and there's right. nothing like seeing somebody else, at least for me, and I'm assuming that most people, like seeing somebody else win. Like I am always for the underdog. I'm always for the hard worker, you know, um, my, my road dog, my uh, partner in crime, as far as uh, entrepreneurship, Terry Bradley, who's on the um, Brown Toy Box, we are working together nine times out of 10 to grow our business. And every win that we see for one another is significant for us because we got to see the journey. Yeah, and entrepreneurship yeah. is hard and black entrepreneurship is hard. The economy is hard. And to see somebody bust out in any way is, man, what, what can I do? Terry's trying to do a $1.7 million raise. I'll probably talk about her company more than she talk about her company because I want to see people win because it's not fun by yourself. And um, along with owning dope pieces, I also work at the Russell Center, um, the Russell Center. And um, Mr. Russell, Herman Jerome Russell, look him up if you're not aware, um, one of his quotes was collaboration over competition. Mm -hmm. I've learned about and had the opportunity to befriend um, other puzzle companies, apostrophe puzzle company, another black owned puzzle company. It's a $2 billion industry. Is it hurting me to talk about them? It is not. Um, you know, uh, puzzles of color, color, puzzles of joy, uh, puzzle huddle and um, cocoa puzzles. There's other black owned puzzle companies out there and they should be supported. Our artwork is very different, right, but right. they're all also dope puzzle companies out there. You know, Wahini Puzzle, which is a Native American brand of puzzle. Wow. I think that um, it's important to know because like when you go to the movies, what makes it really important for us to go to the movie theater when black movies come out that are significant and tell our stories, what makes it important that we go see it is that it tells other people that we want this. Right, right. We, we want, we want vote, this. Vote. You know, it's, it's a vote. It's our vote. You know, right now, my big goal, my big focus goal, outside of getting an Essence magazine by myself, is um, getting into Barnes and Noble because that's where I always bought my puzzle. But to this day, I cannot go there and buy three black owned puzzles or even Native American or even Latin. I, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so we put dope pieces on the shelf and they sell out during Christmas time, right? And we have, say we do one, I have six currently. We put four out there, they sell out. So when Apostrophe Puzzle comes in and Coco Puzzle comes in and Puzzle Huddle comes in, then that makes a market for everybody else. And so, um, you know, I want to see, I want to see everybody win. But I talk a lot, so you have to kind of rein no, me. No, no, no. <laughs> you definitely um, sharing things with us that we need to hear. Um, because, you know, you don't hear, you don't see, uh, or rather you do see McDonald's, Right across right the street from Burger King. And then, mm -hmm. then a few paces, paces from there, Wendy's. And then another, you know, a few paces from there, Chick-fil-A. And for the most part, they're selling the same types of things. But you but never, you ever, ever, ever hear anybody say, oh, there's too many fast food restaurants on this block. People, People spend, spend their money, money nonetheless. And so, and so you know, show us, that, us number, one, number one, when you when have, you have a number, number of businesses, businesses that are working in, in, a, in a certain area, it helps to drive traffic that benefits all of us because wow, wow. most people most are not going to eat the same thing every day. So the point my, is by coming together with other black owned puzzle companies, you're you're providing, you're providing options, options. But guess what? what? People, people are going to choose dough pieces one day, puzzle puzzle another day, and all and of all the benefits. So, so I, I, I appreciate you highlighting highlight because there's a, there's a principle, principle there that I think we would do well. well and you know, it's funny because I was just kind of thinking. Um, you know, my family has uh, roots in the nation, and I remember going. Uh, to class one day and they said something and it's probably one of my most favorite things because I am not about the crabs in the barrel. I you won't hear me say it. 
because I don't believe because I didn't experience. But what I did hear is uh, one of the questions, sis, if you have a bowl of bean soup and your sister is hungry, how much can she have? Half. Half, right? <laughs> you know, and I just, it has not been my experience that that is the norm. And you know, you, you can have half. That's right. You can have half. And so um, I just, and even I'm, I'm reading Esther right now in the Bible. And when um, Esther was talking to, to the king and he was like, I'll give you, I'll give you anything up to half the kingdom. Mm. And I was like, that's a, that's a big gift up to half my kingdom. And so um, I think that it's easy to focus on the story that the other people tell you about us. But I think the reality is different. The reality is definitely different because we as people were communal like that. That's in our DNA, you know, to share with the village. Right. Right. You know, um, I, and, I, and I would, you know, challenge anybody to look up the history of like, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. That's got to be African proverb. Oh, it, oh, it, it has to be, <laughs> you know. And so um, I refuse to pour into that. uh empty well of we don't do this mm -hmm. this is what we do mm -hmm. this is what we do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah and if you do see it because i don't i don't want to say that it doesn't exist that's, it that's, does but if you do see it it is a breakdown of the family structure yes it is a breakdown of the community and to your point it is it's our legacy it's our cultural norm to work communally i, I want to kind of pivot into our top topic today right um, which um, is the value, value of black, black art. art. And before yeah, we before get we started, started, I just want to hear just, hear just a couple of things to kind of set the stage. stage. Uh, first, uh, first, first, you think about the Jay Z lyric. Uh, what a billionaire, too, especially when they're the same hue as you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I say that to my, my squad all the time. You know, that's, that's how we're supposed to roll. I wish billions on you all. Yes, yes. I'm not satisfied unless let everybody. everybody. Uh, uh, talk about, about what, what, what our, our, we need about that we see in the news, news, what they're doing they're with their money by way of investing um, on uh, behalf of their family, family to help, to help generate generation generational generation. wealth. Mm -hmm. So Jason talked about last about episode, last episode how he spent four point five million dollars for uh, a painting called Mecca. And it is and by the late uh, Jean Michel Mesquite, uh, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, very, I mean, incredible artist um, um, who, who died way too soon. soon. Way too soon. But his, but his, his art work definitely lives on. Now, now yeah. it's yeah. like a thing for a half million dollars. Do you, you believe it's related to $6 million? Six million. Six million. Six million. <laughs> I didn't hear the last part of what you said. It was, it was actually slated to sell, sell at the auction, auction for six million dollars. Mm. So that so means that, that the value, value we bought that in 2013. You can imagine, imagine what the value, the value of that of means. That means that. That. Exactly. Nitty spent $20 million on the Carrie James, Carrie James Marshall painting. Check this out now. Okay. At, at, at time, time, it was the highest uh, amount that one purchased. purchased from a living artist. That is important. That is so important. The highest the gross uh, 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 artwork or painting was sold. Uh, it was it was painting from Jean Michel. It sold for one hundred and ten million dollars, y'all. We're talking about a lot of money that's being invested into the artwork. We're going to talk about some of the benefits of that. And then Swiss Beats is an avid art collector. And he's been known to purchase artwork from Keith Haring as well as Jean Michel Besky. So, one of my things, you may ask that question, because I think it's important for us to kind of hear the name so that we can go back and do our homework. Because when we get that inheritance, hello, would we have an insurance policy that's left to us and we're wondering what to do with some of the money? Invest in artwork, y'all. When we get that good paying job that gives us these bonuses, get you some artwork. 
So what are your thoughts, Sister oh, Chris? So it's so significant in so many ways. And so I'm going to be honest about the conversation. So I have my own thoughts around this. But what I did is to make sure that I went full circle on it is that I called my friend Onaje Henderson. Now, Onaje okay, Henderson okay. is the owner of Zucot Art Gallery. Z-U-C-O-T. Yeah, yeah. Zucott Gallery is the largest Black-owned art gallery in the Southeast, and it's owned by three brothers, Troy, Onaje, and Omari. Now, Troy, I mean, Omari and Onaje started that art gallery for their father, Aaron Henderson, who is a phenomenal artist. Look up all these people. And if you're in Atlanta or you're visiting Atlanta, reach out to them and go view the gallery. So I was like, you know, I want to be fresh in this conversation. And so we were talking, and he said during apartheid, they flew the wealth of that country out on the airplane. Mm -hmm. They didn't take no houses. They didn't take, you know, anything, but they rolled up that art and flew it out. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was like, that is so crazy. When they stole from them, they stole the artwork. Right. Because you can't always go dig in the ground and take all the riches out of there. But a lot of times, you know, when there were wars or, you know, things that were happening, they took the artwork, they'd roll it up and you, I remember watching a movie and um, if anybody ever saw the movie with uh, Drew Barrymore in it and Da Vinci had just painted um, the Mona Lisa, right? Mm -hmm. And the robbers were coming, he rolled that up, put it in this thing and he was walking around with it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's travel friendly, one. Right, right. And so the other thing with art, as far as being um, something to invest in, is that unlike stocks, you know, it goes, you know, stocks go okay. up and down, it depreciates and, you know, it moves and does all that is it is an excellent way to diversify your portfolio. Mm -hmm. You know, Excellent. when um, and I want to say that there are three ways and I think that was a part of the interview. There are three ways to um, grow wealth and it's through land, it's through mm -hmm. art and it's through um, <clears throat> I forgot what the third one was. But when you have all of this money, you can't just keep it all in the bank. You don't just keep it under your mattress or whatever. Art is another way for you to um, keep that investment. And so there are people that have, um, I forgot what they're called, but um, places where their art is stored. And they spend a lot of money on that because they understand if things go south, they have this painting. They Absolutely. have this, you know, sculpture. They have this. And so the cool thing about art, um, just in general, is that, um, and I made some notes and stuff, so you'll see me kind of look over to them. But um, the value of the art, a lot of time is based on the artist. And so you see someone purchase, you know, this piece of art. And then it gets in the news and it gets in the media, right? So right. the value of that artist goes up. So the value of the art then goes up as well. Right. And so I always thought that that was really, really interesting because it's not, it's very subjective. You know, and then again, it was with everything. I'm very big on becoming educated about that process. But the other thing is we have to be custodians of our own story. And that terminology, you know, uh, the gentlemen at the gallery are custodians of culture. But we have right, to be right. um, custodians of our own culture. It is our responsibility because so many times our value is told to us and validated by other people. But say, let's say Charlie Palmer. Charlie Palmer had the cover of um, Time Magazine a few months back. It is a gorgeous image, look him up. But nobody should be able to tell us the value of Charlie Palmer's work more than us, right? Absolutely. It should be the people that are validating our art and then Art, art like literature tells the story of the time, right? And so the images that we see coming out now, like if you went through a lot of urban cities, um, a friend of mine, another one of my artists, Vincent Ballantyne, was on um, Nightline. I'm going to bring it all together, was on Nightline because he did um, a beautiful image of, and I feel so bad about forgetting his last name, but Isaiah, he was a young man who um, was on the spectrum, who was murdered. He used to play the violin for cats. Really, really sweetheart. And he painted an image of his last words behind the image of him, right? Mm -hmm. so anybody that sees that image is going to be like, what was happening at that time? All of the pictures and images of George Floyd, that art kind of depicts our journey in history. It is a timeline of what's happening it's in our history. It's a marker. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is on us as a people to pass down those stories, that legacy, those images, that artwork for generation after generation and keep them in our family, keep them in our um, 
keep them in our keep them amongst ourselves and determine that value ourselves you know those things are really really important so when you talk about building the legacy it's twofold it's the financial component of it but it's also the the history keeping of of that for us as well so yeah you i could do this all day it's definitely (laughs) a a record keeping you you brought up some Mm -hmm. uh, great um historical highlights by talking about South Africa. You know, a lot of people don't realize one of the first first things things that they, uh, unfortunately, that we pillaged um, going into Libya, going into Iran, Iran, uh, was their museums and taking the artwork, as you said. Um, A lot of the uh, artwork from antiquity, from our African antiquity, uh, was Taken, taken uh, uh, colonization, colonization was taking place, place. And, and you can you find can a lot of lot of artwork in Europe, in England, in, in France, in, in Germany, Germany. And, and a lot of African, African, African leaders, leaders have been demanding that that, that artwork, artwork be sent back, back to the country, country because, as just stated, stated, it is it not, is not really a wealth bank. bank. Yes, these things are probably in many instances. But it, but it also, also is a record of their history. history. So you can no you longer can tell, tell someone uh, that you were you not, were that blacks were not the first to invent airplanes airplane. when you, you see an uh, uh painting, painting, you know, or, or figures that show flying objects. <laughs> and then you say that that's something that was invented in, in, in more recent, more recent years. years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three, 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 three. And so these so are very, very, very important to us as a people. But in but terms, terms of the, the generational wealth building component, we have real estate, we have the artwork, the third being your stocks and other investments. I think, it's, it's, like you said, it's important that we understand to start diversifying. You know, we're becoming more and more savvy. I'm starting to see more. Uh, investment groups, black-led investment groups that are delving into mm-hmm. cryptocurrency and, and things of that nature. But I don't hear as much conversation being had about black artwork. And when you're talking about building the value of black artwork, it starts with people like a Diddy, people like a Jay-Z, people like a Swiss Beats, spending the kind of money that they're spending, because to your point, it supports the appreciation of the artwork. And I'm so push back that- on that. I'm going to push back on that a little bit in that it is really important for people like Diddy and those people who are more, um, I can't tell if I'm talking over you or not, because I think that there's a bit of no, a delay. No, 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 no. I apologize if I am. But I think that it's important for those, for the visible, for the people to be able to see it on a larger scale. But it is really important for us to go to galleries ourselves and learn about the art and start finding the things that we like and start purchasing our own collection. Because if you came to my house, right? Cause you're not probably gonna go to Diddy house. I don't know how many of us have access to Diddy's house or to uh, Hova's house, but if you came to my house and you saw, you know, a Alfred Conte or a Dante Yarbrough on the wall or a Charlie on the wall or a Tracy on the wall, then, um, then that's a conversation for you and I to have to say, you know what? And you see me and you actually see me at work on a regular basis. And you're like, oh, well, you can afford that. How did you do that? You know, they say that most pieces start ranging like a really fine art pieces of maybe at $5,000. But if you see me with a piece on my wall, then that's more tangible that you can start your collection, right? That you can say, you know what? Maybe I can do that. Maybe I'll start a little a little art fund that I can start growing my art collection. And then you and I start going to art galleries together. And then we bring another sister along that we bring another brother along with us. And so it, it is very, very valid to see Puffy by a big piece and Swift beats by a big piece. But I don't, I think that there are more people who have millions to spend. Um, there are less people that have millions to spend and more people that have like hundreds and thousands to go on and start building that art collection. Because I'll tell you right now, Patrick Doer, who's another one of the artists that does dope pieces, he just did the book cover for, um, I want to say their eyes were watching God. And Oprah mm-hmm. talked about, you know, how beautiful his piece was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's also one of the artists. His stock goes up. But that's probably a piece of art that I can afford right now. You know, and, and, so and, and we're not in disagreement. I think the point that I was attempting to make is celebrities using their platform, yes, as a way of helping to drive attention to other ways and other things that we can invest in. The, the, the fact of the matter is, Diddy could just as easily purchase 
artwork from a, a Caucasian artist yeah. and put that out in the forefront as being this is the epitome of wealth generation. Wealth generation. But they made a conscious decision to support a black artist. And that, that was the point that I was making in terms of them continuing within their realm of influence to, to, to do that. Because there are young people watching, there are people who are looking to say, okay, well, what are they doing with their money? And on and True. on our level, to your point, to what we can afford, we're going to try everything that we can to, to mimic that, right? To right. create that. Create that. You know, I'm going to piggyback on that. Ice, ice. We see the ice and we get ice that we can afford to get at Greenbrier Mall, right? <laughs> but, but we're going to try our best to mimic that. And so that was the point exactly. that I was And so maybe that was a long phrasing of that. But, and, and I'll, to your point, so I was watching um Blackish, right? And you know, on Blackish, they have some black art. He has, you know, a couple of black artists in there. But I was watching the episode and they were pulling out a puzzle. And it was a puzzle of some doggone puppies on flowers. And I was like, that could have been me. That that was your responsibility to find a black owned puzzle company and go on and put them on that uh TV look, screen. Look, yeah, just, where are you use your post placement. Use your, use your uh, circle influence right there. Yeah, I absolutely then, understand. This, we have a comment that came from one of our Instagram viewers. From okay. Marvel. Thank you for taking in and maybe I talked. We need more art galleries to help develop art appreciation in our community. We need Definitely. more art. I, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. She said we need more art galleries to to help develop art appreciation in Absolutely. our community. And I definitely uh, agree with that wholeheartedly. And I think that's where we were talking about Zakat Art Gallery. I actually reached out to him because I desire uh, my family and I to do a tour of their gallery. Um, and there and there are others. The Carlos Museum, um, I believe, is under the auspice of Clark Atlanta University. Um, mm -hmm. Now and again, the High Museum may do a um, an exhibit. True. that features a black artist and so it, we should be found supporting that as well um oh, what, what else what else can we do i don't know if, if the brothers from and i would love to have them on the show um what else did uh, they share in terms of us being able to offer even more support to art galleries like that or to, or what have the artists who you have um received artwork from for your puzzle business company they shared with you that we can do to offer more support by their art um, you know, and so, and, and it's not always as expensive, but, um, so Zucat got and educate yourself. You know, I'm always going to go back to education, but Zucat gallery does this wonderful thing called an art tasting. And so they have an artist come in and they talk about art broadly. So like, I didn't, you know, most people will hang their art over the fireplace. Right. Mm -hmm. But the fumes from the, um, fireplace can affect the value of the art or they'll want to put it in like the bathroom but the steam affects that and then something that i did and when they said it i was like oh like oil-based paintings are never framed because the oil never really dries and so like it really is an education and then i think the other thing that's really really important because you know i often will talk about people feeling like art is over there and it's for them and i'm not supposed to be over here because i recall inviting my friend to a um to an event at the art gallery and he was like I don't know anything about art and I was like but you know what you like and what you don't like and so I used to nanny and I had a little uh three-year-old boy named Will he's like 14 now but I would take him he's been to all the art galleries that I know of and so he I would put him at a wall and I'd like look at all the art and I would say tell me what your favorite is and he would point and say you know I like that one and I'm like why do you like it and he turned to me and said because it's blue that's all he okay. needed to know that it and was, and that was all that was necessary. That was all that was necessary. And so I think the one thing that we can do for artists is engage with their art. Find mm -hmm. artists that you like are following their page and really start developing your eyes for it. Patrick Doer, D-O-U-G-H-E-R, Vincent Ballantyne, Ananda Nahu, N-H-U, um, Ale Alejandro Quito, like he's another one of the artists that I'm working with. But Beautiful. something about his work is changing. He's out of Brazil and having an understanding that there's black people are everywhere. And I was telling somebody I, jokingly, I, I, everywhere that there was a war, there's some black people. There's some people that look like us because they were talking about this thing, I think, in France called the brown baby problem from when all the soldiers were over there. And mm -hmm. so can you imagine someone who's a brown baby from that war 
seeing images every day that don't look like them, but the moment they do see an image that looks like them, whether they're in the Philippines and Cambodia and wherever, like those things are really, really important. But I strongly encourage people going to look at more artists. Dante Yarbrough out of Clark, Atlanta, originally from, um, uh, where is Dante originally from? Dante's originally from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, but, you know, is a strong artist out here looking at art, finding um, black art pages and, you know, doing those things and purchasing the art as you can and then talking about it and sharing those stories and saying, oh, girl, I love art. And instead of going out to other places, go to art galleries, host that's art right, shows right. out your house. Grant Hill is, and I didn't know this, he, he has an incredible incredible art collection. He did a, a showing over at um, the gathering spot a couple years back and he has some of the most incredible pieces. Asking questions, um, becoming more knowledgeable about it and finding things that you like and getting it any way that you can. And if it's in the form of a puzzle, right. then buy it in the form of a puzzle. You that's know, right, buy it in right. the form of a t-shirt. But as you have those images that are readily available, people start asking more questions like, oh, where'd you get that puzzle? Where'd you get that t-shirt? Where'd you get that keychain?" So I'm um, supporting in the way that you can. I, I agree I, with you. Now, in terms of um, that engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that we engage, I think doing it on different levels is is beneficial. And you mentioned, you know, the gathering spot hosting, you know, maybe R I C D want to host hosting, you know. Absolutely. We're gonna have art all throughout here. If you've already yeah, been yeah. downstairs in the um in our Chase Lounge downstairs, that's Aaron Henderson's work down there. Zucat Art Gallery releasing that artwork from them. Beautiful. So every opportunity. And when you go over to um even when you go to Cam Newton spot uh fellowship, he has a whole art wall above the bar. Uh, TGS, the gathering spot, has a whole art wall over there and really supporting black art. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the um, other thing that we didn't talk about that I think is important to mention is that some of us are actually sitting on valuable artwork and don't know it. I have um, family members that uh, have, you know, I, I love old things, so furniture and things of that nature, and they still have the lining. Uh, which they use back those days, newspapers with the original date, 1928, 1930, 1932. So you may already have pieces of artwork in your family that people are holding on to that they may not understand the value of it. So, you know, communicating with our families is important too, and, and cherishing what we're getting from our families. Yeah. Um, if you mind taking a minute, Sister Chris, and sharing with our viewers what are the different forms of work because you have different types of artwork with dope pieces, but from contemporary, from contemporary, what are some of the other types of artwork that you feel? Um, contemporary artwork, and I'm not going to be great at this, but contemporary artwork, fine artwork, sculpture, um, abstract. Um, those are the ones that uh, I, that come off the top of my head. I had someone call me and ask, "Do you have any abstract pieces?" Which means that um, you know, you can't really tell what it is in the piece, and it's more. It is, it is what you say it is. Yeah, it is what you say it is. Um, <laughs> portrait, you know, just different. And I think that it's important to kind of find like your Steve, find like what you like about art, and know that it's possible to go in and uh, make sure that that's really the diverse. And graffiti. And graffiti. Graffiti art absolutely murals, graffiti, street art, all of those things, and they're valid. They are valid art form, art forms, and it's important for us to be able to say that that's valid without having to have somebody else come and say it's absolutely, valid for absolutely. us. Absolutely. absolutely, we're going to take one more commercial break um, from our sponsors. I want to thank everybody on Instagram Live, Facebook, and YouTube. We're just going to show some love to our sponsors, and then we're going to have our closing comments, Sister Chris, and um, as well as information of how they can get in contact with you and all their dope pieces. PI Talks is brought to you by our proud sponsor, Abdullah Daniels Group, LLC. We are a full-service life insurance agency that represents multiple carriers in all 50 states. For more details, log on to our website at adgllc.org or call us at 404-561-7480. Abdullah Daniels Group, Life Insurance Agency. P.S. Naturally Yours, 1614 Oil. Let all things be done with love. 1614 is nourishing hair, skin, and nail oil. 
cultivated to transform your skincare routine with our unique natural essential oils that features sweet vanilla, citrus with a hint of cinnamon. P.S. Naturally Yours 1614 Oil is now available at psnaturallyyours.com. All right, Sister Chris, we are back. Always working, always working. <laughs> so how can they get everyone get in contact with you in terms of ordering Dope Pieces Puzzles? So you can order at dopepieces.art. And that is the best way to go about it. Um, if you want to come in and pick them up, I'm always at the Russell Center. My puzzles live here with me as well. And then what I will also ask is follow me on, on Instagram and on Facebook because um, always being strategic as I am trying to, you know, get this goal and get into Barnes and Noble, showing that I have a following where people think that this is important is also helpful. So yeah, follow me at Dope Pieces Puzzle Company on Instagram. Go to dopepieces.art at um, purchase there or you can um, call the number that's available on there and oh and you can also purchase them at um, the book boutique I need to restock them but they are also housed at Village Retail and Pont City Market awesome I can't believe I forgot to say that so at book boutique they'll be getting restocked at they're also at village retail um dr key's beautiful um installation up there uh just above williams sonoma and uh, pond city market and then i will have a booth july 1st for uh buy from a black woman which will be held over at uh, atlantic station so there's more information on my instagram about that and you have the opportunity to support other beautiful black owned women owned businesses on that day on July 1st as she um, starts her tour. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 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 Well, we well, will be sure to uh, check you out in one of those locations, locations or online. We're going to check out that website. And I, I really encourage everybody to take a look at all the different, all the different, different puzzles. puzzles. Yeah, they, they really are beautiful. Thank um, you. I have some I, MTVs that I'm going to be going to be going to be pieces because I know they sit at home and they do puzzles all day and they enjoy it. Um, and I have some pieces that I, uh, a puzzle I'd like to get for my son because he loves puzzles. Um, so but I, I really, I appreciate you so much, Sister Chris, for taking time out of your busy day to join us here at BBI Talk. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a little delay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm not sure if um, you guys heard me say that or you all heard me say that. And so I appreciate the opportunity to uh, run my mouth and talk and talk about art and puzzles. So thank you again. I hope that what I uh, said or something that I said was beneficial and fed somebody. So thank you. I definitely. Look, I know it fed I appreciate you. Good. Good. Whoever's giving us feedback on in Instagram, they have been well fed today as well. So don't you wish you accomplished. Look. Thank you again, Sister Chris Hale of Dope Pieces. Thank you for joining BBI Talks. Remember, we are here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. right here on Instagram Live, Facebook, and YouTube. And if you missed an episode, guess what? Don't worry, because we offer replays on all those platforms as well as Anchor, Spotify, and Google Play. So this is the end of our episode six, The Value of Black Art. You know what it is. It's BBI Talks with your host, Professor Karima Lotus. Peace. We gotta bring businesses back. My business is black. My business is black as the universe. I know why they mad. They gotta react. Cause we're universal influencers. I can supply you the man. Get what I need out the land. The earth is the kingdom of God. Glad that I know where I am. We gotta bring businesses back. My business is black. My business is black as the universe. I know why they mad. They gotta react. Cause we're universal influencers. I can supply you the man. I can supply you the man. Get what I need out the land. Glad that I